All right. Let's go through this demo to better understand this topic. Log in to your AWS console and choose the AWS region where you want to deploy this new EC2 instance. We will discuss AWS regions in detail in the next section of the course. The home screen of the console shows the recent services used. If EC2 is not listed there, search for it in the top search bar. You can star it to pin it to the favorite services toolbar. Open the EC2 page and select Instances. Launch a new instance and start specifying the required parameters. Give it a name. As discussed, select an AMI to choose the operating system to run on this instance. After selecting the AMI, now it is time to select your instance type and size, select from hundreds of options available and choose one that matches your workload requirements, as we explained in the previous video. Other parameters you might need to define, such as the key pair you can use to SSH into that server, along with other parameters related to network and security that would be explained later. Click on Launch Instance button. Within a few minutes, your instance would be ready. So what do you do after the instance is launched? As an administrator, log into your instance, finalize the setup and the settings of your machine, install your application, and make the server for production. Then, your server would become ready for your clients to connect to it. Let's return back to the slides to complete this part. We have an important section about the different pricing options for EC2. The default pricing model is on-demand, where you pay per hour or second of your compute consumption. There are no upfront payments needed and there are no long-term commitments. You can power off your instance at any time and stop paying for it. On-demand pricing is ideal for elastic workloads, workloads that are to run for the short term or have changing demand patterns, sometimes we call those elastic workloads. What about you would like to save more on your compute bill? Another option exists that can introduce savings for you, it is the spot instances model, but pay attention, this is not suitable for all workloads. Pay attention. AWS shares its spare capacity in its data centers with customers by offering them the ability to host their instances as spot instances at a very attractive price that can yield savings of up to 90%. However, under some conditions, AWS might claim that compute capacity back and need to power off your instances after giving you a warning window. So, there is a chance for service disruption. This makes spot instances ideal for workloads that can tolerate disruptions, workloads with flexible start and stop times like test and dev. What about if your workload is more of a steady state workload and of a predictable performance? If you can make long-term commitments of one year long or three years, you can choose for that instance to be a reserved instance. You would be able to secure savings that can go up to more than 70% compared to the on-demand rates. Multiple factors can affect your discount level, such as the commitment length and how much money you could pay up front. Remember, with reserved instances, some parameters about your EC2 instance cannot be changed. So, if you need this discount, and you can make the same long-term commitments, but yet, 
need more flexibility in your computing choices during that commitment period, then there is another model known as the savings plan. With a savings plan, you commit to a certain minimum amount of computing usage per month and have the ability to change your instances, their sizes and types, within the limits of your plan and get a discount of up to 66%. Pay attention. Have you thought about where your instances are physically hosted? Think about tenancy and the most common use case in the cloud, known as shared tenancy. The cloud provider, AWS, hosts on the same hardware different instances that belong to different customers, while segregated from each other. In most of the cases, that is widely accepted, however, in some scenarios, some customers for specific workloads might not find that suitable. Some workloads, for compliance or licensing purposes, might need dedicated hardware, only allocated to them, to pass their compliance requirements. There are two dedicated hosting pricing models. You can choose dedicated instances, and AWS will allocate a physical host for you to host your dedicated instances. You still pay per instance, in addition to an extra fixed cost per dedicated host per month, so it is more expensive than the standard EC2 pricing. The other alternative is to get directly from AWS a dedicated host and become responsible for it. You pay per host to AWS and you can benefit here from the ability to bring your own license to that dedicated hardware.